Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have actually been traveling to India for the past few days. I'm finally back home with my family. I'm super jet lagged and I thought why not spend some time making some videos. So I'll give a bit of a backstory to this video. Last year I was actually supposed to intern at Microsoft during the summer of 2020. I wasn't able to do that because the COVID pandemic hit and I came back home to be with my family. Going into my third year, I didn't have much work experience on my resume. This past year, I've been actually working at three different companies, starting with HubSpot in Jan, Lyft, which you guys saw the video for, and finally at Facebook or Meta, as you may call it now. I want to talk about how I was able to land such great internships without having experience or work experience on my resume. So let's get into it. So I kind of fell asleep just recording the video. Jet lag is really hitting me, but let's continue from where I left off. There are three hours of recruiting to keep in mind that will help you get the foot in the door. The first hour is reference. Second is resume. A third is reaching out to recruiters or recruiters for short. Let's start with the first hour. Referrals. Referrals are a great way to get your foot in the door. They might not be the most relevant in the industry today, just because referrals can be given to anyone and everyone, even if you don't know them. Um, to give you some perspective, some companies don't really accept referrals or don't place so much importance in referrals anymore, just because you can ask anyone and everyone for a referral and you might get it. But it's still an important thing to do, so you can get your foot in the door. And the best way to start about it is that you reach out to friends in your close circle, but don't limit yourself to that. So during the fall of 2020, when I was applying to multiple different uh, internships, I reached out to not just my close friends, but my classmates that I'd just been acquainted with, but uh, also LinkedIn people. So the way to go about approaching this is you write a message or an email to a person that you want a referral from. So you start with, Hey, I want to know how your experience was and I'm really interested in this company and for that reason I want a referral and then you talk about why you would be a good fit for the company. So consider this as an elevator pitch for you. It should be more than a paragraph, um, maybe like three, four lines at the most and you just talk about why you think you'd be a good fit for the company and this has come so handy for me. Um, on the side of the person who is referring, uh, it's useful because when you're filling out the referral form, you fill out the name and the information for the person, but you also are asked, why do you think this person would be a good fit for this company? And this blurb really helps us write a referral for you. The next piece of the puzzle is the resume, which is basically the most important part of the recruiting process. It's what gets you to the interview stage. If you're going into recruiting season without any experience on your resume, there are many ways you can make up to it. First, recruiters are looking for people who are self-starters, who take initiative and who have leadership qualities. So if you're still in school, take part in a lot of leadership opportunities with your club, with teaching assistantship, with student organizations, with faculty student mentorship. That will really help you push forward your resume and your leadership skills. Second, you can always do self-started projects and that shows initiative again. And it also shows that you're willing to learn new skills on your own. And that's something that's valued in any company. If you can show that you can learn a new skill, then it's something that the company knows you can do when you come over to them and you won't, they won't have to teach you for a long time. Try to maintain a breadth of technical skills. Don't just focus on one part of the stack of technology. Maybe focus on um, doing the front end, back end, um, AI stuff if that's what interests you. Some of the technologies that you could be working with is React, Django, Flask, um, PyTorch, Keras. Third, you should be working and looking for opportunities that are not immediately paying you and they could be paying you in experience. So what I mean are startups. Startups are a good way to get um, experience working with a team, um, but also a good way to learn new skills and work in a company. 
in the summer of 2020, I actually worked with a startup to develop an app which was uh, used which used React Native and Django. So they didn't have an engineering team. So I basically had to work with another team of my own to build a ground app from ground up. And that provided me a lot of product management skills, leadership skills. Um, and that, that's something that you can talk about in interviews also. But if there is an engineering team that already exists, you can get mentorship from them, but also it could be used in an interview to talk about how you learned how to work in a team and how you can reciprocate in a bigger team. So these are good things to keep in mind. When you're done making the resume, be sure to pass it through an ATS parser, just like this one. Make sure all the information kind of filters through and comes. You can even look at the scores, the different type of breakdown of things, just like this. The final R is reaching out to the recruiters. Now this is a very daunting task because you're reaching out to essentially someone that you don't know of, haven't talked to or met before. But it's a very important skill to have because A, it shows initiative and B, it provides character to your resume or your application. Reaching out to recruiters can happen in multiple ways, but the most common way is to cold email them. Now, when you do that, you're basically stating that, hey, I want to work for this company, but also a reason why you'd be a good fit for the company, just like we discussed in referrals. But how do you figure out which email to contact a recruiter on or how to contact them. You can always reach out to them on LinkedIn, but InMail needs premium accounts. So the best way to do it is using Clearbit Connect. This tool allows you to look up a person's email and you can find the person on LinkedIn or essentially on Clearbit's tool. So it installs on Gmail. So let's see the tool in action out here. Start by first selecting the company that you want to find the recruiter for. For me, I'm choosing Lyft. You can scroll to the role and find the person within the role. For me, I'm selecting recruiter or recruiting. And then there are a list of recruiters that are within the company. You can select one of them, you can select multiple of them. I always suggest selecting multiple of them and emailing them all. So this is a good format that you can use for cold emailing recruiters. You start by introducing yourself and talking about where you're from. You tell them how you found them, maybe through LinkedIn or maybe through a friend or something else. And then you talk about which position that you applied for. Uh, for me, I'm applying for software engineering positions, but you may be applying for product management positions and or development positions and so on and so forth. And then you talk about how you fit into the community at that company. So a good way to describe why you're a good fit for the community is basically researching about the company's mission statement, values, etc., and talking about how you align with these values and statements. And then you can end by thanking the recruiter for the time and hope you get a response back. I'll make sure to link both Clearbit Connect as well as Resume Worded in the description below. So be sure to check it out. That's it from my side. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and comment below about other videos you want to watch. Don't forget to press the bell icon for more notifications. And I'll see you in the next one.